I wanted to really quickly make this video to discuss something that I talked about in a video that I posted relatively recently. I've not received any backlash because I have like two comments on all my videos, but I was just watching and I was just like, man, I was uncharacteristically harsh to a camera. And normally, like I like most cameras. There, there's a few that I'm not terribly fond of for various reasons, but you know, there are people out there that are big fans of the cameras that I don't like for, for very, you know, rational reasons. So who am I to tell them, hey, you shouldn't like that camera? Like, obviously, like what you like. This is just my preference. But I realized that when I was discussing uh, the Canon T50, this, this guy, I definitely did not give it its full due. I basically addressed it as more or less just a parts camera. And to some extent it is, but then I also think that that kind of overshadows its importance, historically speaking. Um, when I was researching the camera to make sure that I was correct about the Copal shutter, I was for the record, but um, what I realized was that the T50 is kind of a pivotal point in Canon's development as a company and in addressing the needs of the consumer. Now, what I'd said previously in the other video uh, was that the T50 kind of serves as more of like a point and shoot, and that was actually the point of it. So props to me for being correct on that assessment, because there's really not much you can do with it. There's not a lot of control given to you. Uh, you have a program mode, and that's basically it. But that's the point, like this was designed to be used by a casual consumer, you know, the AA batteries, everybody has AA batteries, they're super easy to come by, it's not, you don't have to go online or you don't have to like go to a specialty shop and get a couple button cells or, you know, um, one of the CR2 batteries or something like that, you just have, take them out of your TV remote, you have AA batteries, you know, you just, you add the lens on there and you're good to rock. Like you have virtually everything you need. It's a compact, you know, body and all these things. And also, as I mentioned previously, it's the first SLR with a copal shutter. I don't think they're all called copal shutters, but it's the uh, vertical traveling metal shutter as opposed to the horizontally traveling uh, cloth shutter. And so basically what that does is it allows this to fire at higher speeds. Although I don't think this goes above one one thousandth of a second. Uh, but the other thing that it does outside of that, I think the, the T70 does go higher, I believe, but the T50 still is very basic, but regardless, it doesn't matter. It will allow you to fire at a higher flash sync speed. I just think that as I was talking trash about the T50 and its use only being for the prism, there are some things I was kind of overlooking and I just wanted to address that and, and partially apologize because I like cameras, I like film photography, I think it's a very important and also strangely interesting field because there's so much that is just completely unknown and whether it's like different companies trying to figure out what works and what doesn't or different consumers trying to like jerry-rig some solution for a problem that they're having i just find that those are all small stories that play into the bigger the bigger fabric of what makes film photography unique and something like a t50 is kind of an odd footnote because it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's kind of got one of those faces that only a mother could love. And I'm sure that, you know, there are people out there who just think this is the pinnacle of design. I'm not one of those people because I have working eyes, but it is something that, you know, played some kind of a role in Canon's development as a company. Like I said, staying consistent with their consumer model cameras you know, stuff that it was accessible for newcomers and also just kind of fun to use. Precursor to a lot of like the autofocus um, SLRs that came down the line and then eventually led into Canon's resurgence as, you know, the digital camera 
monster that it is today. So this, not necessarily, but in a small way, I think that this lays an important foundation for those steps to come. And I just brutalized it to get the prism out so I could fix a Pentax K1000. So that being said, <laughs> This is the Canon T50. Sorry if I have rubbed anyone the wrong way because of it. I hope that this somewhat makes up for my transgressions. See you on the next one.